patentable intellectual property or for? Well, no, I, I don't, I, there's n absolutely no reason to uh, limit it to patents. But there is no doubt, and we are confirming it here as, uh, as well as in any other session, that patent, it's more costly, more complex, more time consuming, except because it's ultimately a stronger protection if it works, if it's applied rather, if it's enforced, is a stronger protection. But I am, like I said, I'm a supporter of IP in general, and I am very much for, in fact, I'm working with top lawyers in my country in order to develop better framing for copyright, better framing for know-how, because I am fully aware that lots of individuals and companies can't afford patents, okay. but at the end of the day, at the moment, that is the linchpin because it's stronger. Francisco, I think you wanted to react on this. Or, or uh, well, I mean, software patents are a topic of uh, the uh, yeah. interest in the digital software alliance. Um, in 2005, <coughs> when we were following the uh, computer implemented directive, to be technically uh, yes. pro correct, we found uh, just in the EPO database 35,000 individual. Uh, and SME inventors, European, I'm excluding the big companies and I'm excluding the uh, foreign companies, it was just European individual and SMEs who had filed for patent protection and obtained patent protection from the EPO for their invention, which were software implemented or computer implemented. And we actually wrote to all of them and we asked them to, you know, let their politicians in whatever country they were know that uh, there was a proposal to invalidate most of this uh, patent that they had been granted uh, by the EPO. And as you know, the EPO has a much more rigorous uh, examination and practice as opposed to other offices around the world. And we don't have the patent troll problem. We don't have the, uh, the excessive damages that are a, a real pain in the US for the technology industry. So in 2005, 35,000 individual had, had uh, obtained software or computer implemented patent in Europe. Now we are in 2009. I think there are a lot more of these uh, of this, uh, individual inventors. And asking whether or not we should have software patent or computer patent is a non-question because you can't take away the, you know, the, the creativity and the innovation of these people that have been uh, granted rights and just give it to you know, your, your competitors in China or India because we, we don't have natural resources. We don't have cheap labor. We don't have all these things. What we have is, you know, highly educated uh, engineers. We have high technology. So what do we have to trade with, uh, with this other, you know, trading partner if we don't have specific technology for airplanes, for computer, for cars, for, you know, environmentally friendly? What do we have if we keep hammering uh, on, the IP, uh, on the IP system and trying to destroy it? We have little uh, uh, to compete except our, our excellence our engineer and our, 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 our creativity in developing you know, new technologies and new solution to, uh, to our everyday problem. Maybe, maybe I want to give the floor now the opportunity to get in. Um, yes, you have a question over there. Thank you. Um, I'm Erik Josefsson, advisor to the Green Group. I would have liked to ask uh, Professor Hugenholz uh, to pick up on this um, um, uh, project to harmonize the uh, corporate legislation for Europe, whether the length of the protection would be a part of that project, and if that is so, what would be the right length for protection? Is it 70 years or is it five years? Uh, I, I guess what we had over here when we had um, Christian Engstrom talk, I mean, it, it was the position of your party, right? It may, was may I? But I would like to hear Mr. Hugenholz have yeah. a comment on that. Okay, yeah. the professor would like to give his point of view on this. Oh, the question was asked to me, yes. Thank you for the question, it's a very good one. Uh, let me clarify one point in advance. What I'm not proposing is harmonizing European copyright because we've already done that to a, a certain degree and I don't think it was a very effective operation. What I'm proposing is unification, really creating a European copyright law that would replace national copyright laws and therefore do away with territoriality. This is obviously a very long-term project, but we'll have to start someday, like we 
One day started with the community patent, and one day we started with trademark. Uh, now to give your answer, the, the question, of course, of duration is a very relevant one. Mr. Engström proposes five years. That is <coughs> not as copyright was 20 years ago, but that's more like copyright was 200 years ago. Uh, and when it started in a very early stage, it was very, very short. I agree with people who criticize the current long term. Life plus 70 in the academic community where I come from is generally considered too long. It is too long, even considering the fact that copyright is not only as act, uh, to act as an incentive, but it also has various other rationales. But it is generally considered too long, and it is probably the result of the upwards harmonization process that we have seen in the past, which tends to end up high in the spectrum and not low. It's, it's almost inevitable if you harmonize. Um, so I would be much in favor of a shorter term. I would be very much in favor of not doubling the term of protection of related rights as is currently being proposed by the Commission and the European Parliament has in, in fact already endorsed part of that proposal. Um, again, the academic community is highly criticized, critical of that proposal, which in my perception is, is, is really irrational and can only be, be explained by very effective lobbying. So yes, we, if this project will go underway, we'll have to look very closely at, at duration. Having said that, we are bound by international treaties. That's also my answer to Mr. Engström. There are international minima here. The Berne Convention says life plus 50. So we cannot go below that unless we, we start opening up these international treaties. Okay, thank you. Maybe I want to give Margot Frödiger an opportunity to react as the representative of the Commission to what has been said. Feel free to say what you want. Okay. Given the advanced time, I think I will not comment on all of the points uh, which have been raised in a very interesting discussion. Uh, I, would, I would like to start with uh, several points which have been raised in his first intervention by Professor Hugenholz. Uh, Prof Professor Hugenholz is absolutely right. Uh, there are problems with the way the copyright system has been harmonized and has been regulated at European level because we have been concerned with removing disparities and with raising the level of protection, but we have not addressed the real internal market dimension of copyright, and we have not managed to create a real internal market for copyright, and we have a situation where the territoriality of the rights make it very, very difficult to develop cross-border services and products, and in particular make it very, very difficult to provide and develop pan-European uh, online services, regardless in what content sector we are talking about. Uh, we have tried to address this only once. Many of you will remember that in uh, 2005 we made a uh, recommendation on online music licensing. Uh, this was a soft law approach where we have recommended pan-European licensing for online music. This unfortunately has been taken up and followed only by part of the music industry, uh, by the um, uh, music publishers, by the, to some extent by the record labels, um, but not um, by the collecting society who manage the author's rights. And it is absolutely clear that we will have to address uh, this issue in the next commission. I have mentioned earlier in uh, the first panel.